In this video, I'm going to give you three tips to help you make a great photo montage. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. All right, so let's get your photo montages looking better, shall we? Here are three tips that you can use to make your montages look much better in Adobe Premiere. I'm working in Adobe Premiere version 23.2.0, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. Number one, use camera moves. Any filmmaker will tell you a camera move is going to make your shot more interesting. So, for example, rather than having a still shot of the classroom here, the filmmaker moved the camera while shooting. This movement adds interest. It's actually an evolutionary thing. Our brains have been trained over the decades to pay attention to things that are moving. So, why not use this movement trick for your photo montage? To do this, you're going to add some keyframes at the top and bottom of your shot, and then you'll change the values for position and scale. This is what I mean. First, hit V on your keyboard to bring up the selection tool, then select your first clip. Move your playhead to the top of the clip, like so, then make sure your effect controls tab is open. Do this by going to Window and making sure there's a check mark by Effect Controls. Next, in your Effect Controls tab, expand the Motion tab if it's not already expanded. And under Position and Scale, set two keyframes. This is how you set your first keyframe in Premiere. You're going to be keyframing Position and One by Scale, so click this little stopwatch next to each item. After you click your stopwatch, you can see the keyframes appear to the right. You can see mine peeking out here. Next, you want to adjust the photo so that it's the size and position you want for the beginning of your shot. Usually, you want to start the photo a little smaller, then make it grow. But of course, you don't have to always do this. You can make it go from left to right, big to small, etc. For this example, we'll start out smaller and grow, otherwise called a zoom in. So hover your cursor over the numbers by your scale and slide it left. You can see the scale numbers go down and the photo gets smaller in your program tab. Once you have your smaller size, reposition the photo so that your point of interest is where you'd like it. By adjusting the position value like so, hover over and slide left or right each value here. So once you have your photo looking the way you want it, you need to set a keyframe for your end position. So you'll repeat this process, but now at the end of the clip. So move your playhead to the end of your clip, go to your Effect Controls tab, and make two more keyframes. To make additional keyframes, once you have made your first one, click these little dots here to the right of the numbers. Or another way to do this is to change the numbers here and Premiere will automatically create additional keyframes for you. So watch, I'm going to delete the ones I just created manually by highlighting them and hitting delete. And now I'm going to adjust my scale by hovering over scale and dragging to the right. And you can see that Premiere has created a scale keyframe for me automatically. So make your photo bigger now by dragging the scale value to the right. Once you have it the size you'd like, adjust the position so that your area of interest is in the frame and where you'd like it. Okay, now you have your keyframes at the top and the bottom of your photo. And now if you play it down, you'll see it moving. Voila! So repeat this for the rest of your clips. By the way, you can jump back and forth between keyframes by hitting these arrows here. And if you need to step back frame by frame so that you can see the photo you're working on in your program tab, you can use your left and right arrow keys to move one frame at a time. And lastly, if you accidentally added two keyframes really close to one another, you can stretch your effect controls tab open like so, so that you can see them more easily by using this little slider here at the bottom to zoom in. Number two, add transitions. So now that you've added some lovely camera moves on each photo, it's time to add some transitions. Transitions just smooth it all out and make it look a bit more polished. To do this, first make sure your effect tab is open. 
If it's not, go to Window and make sure there's a check mark by effects. If you already see a check mark there but don't see your effects tab, it might be hiding in one of your open panels. Click the little arrows here to see what else is already open in each panel and scroll down to Effects. Now in your Effects tab, you can see what video transitions are available to you. In general, I stick with the simple transitions, all located in the Dissolve folder. The three I recommend are Cross Dissolve, Dip to Black, or Dip to White. For this example, we're going to use a Cross Dissolve. To add a Cross Dissolve, select it and drag it between your photos. Play your sequence down by hitting Spacebar, and you can see your Dissolve. Now, here's a little trick when it comes to dissolves. If you look closely, you can see that my camera move is starting a hair after we see the photo. See, it kind of jumps into action. The reason it's doing this is that Premiere is grabbing frames from the start of my clip to use for that dissolve. However, those frames come before my first keyframes. So to avoid this jump, you need to slide those keyframes back a little bit. Now, let me preface this by saying if you know you're going to be doing a bunch of cross dissolves in your montage, you may want to do the following steps before you add all your dissolves. That being said, I already added them, so I'm just going to make the following adjustments and add them again. No big deal. So to get rid of the jumps, you need to drag your photo clip up to the video layer above it. Hit V if you're not on your selection tool already and drag upwards. When I do this, of course, I lose my dissolve, but you can add it back afterwards. So once your clip is on video layer two, stretch the beginning of it back a little bit by hovering by the top until you see the red roller here and roll it back a little bit. Then go to your effect controls tab, stretch it open a little more if you need to, move your playhead back a little bit before your first two keyframes and then highlight those two keyframes by dragging your cursor over them then slide them back then back in your timeline put your clip back to its original length by dragging the top back slide the clip back down to video layer one repeat the process with the clip before it put the dissolve back between the clips and voila no more jump lovely Number three, add music. And lastly, add some music. No one wants to sit there in silence looking at your photo montage. Music helps tell your viewer what to feel. It's another tool at your disposal, so use it. Picking the right music takes a little time, but it is totally worth it. Make sure you're matching the vibe of your photos. Excited, calm, grand, tiny, whatever you want your audience to feel, make sure your music matches it. And make sure you're editing and ending onto that music as well, or in the very least, fading your music out at the very end. You can find the audio transitions in the effect tab in the folder, Audio Transitions, Crossfade. I use the constant power one here. If you need some help picking out the perfect music, check out my video called How to Create a Great Radio Ad. In it, I talk a little bit more about how to pick and edit that perfect piece of music. I'll put a link in the description. So that's it. Do camera moves, add transitions, and add the right music. They seem like simple things, but they will really elevate your piece. And as always, if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.